Now to fighting the addiction, acetyl fentanyl. It's the newest version of fentanyl plaguing Jacksonville streets. And as we're learning, it's creating heartbreak for local families. News for Jack's reporter Lauren Verno first explained this new drug back in November while also speaking about her own father losing his battle with addiction. Lauren, after your story, so many people reached out to say addiction has hurt their families too. So many, it's a bit overwhelming. And they all reached out to me wanting to share their stories, including two moms who both lost their sons to acetyl fentanyl. And for the first time, the three of us got to have this real and honest conversation about losing someone to the disease without feeling any shame talking about it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having us. I know you're our newly adopted daughter. Before this day, I had never met Carol Menard or Val Jordan White, but that didn't matter. We're all part of this same club. I lost my father to addiction and these two moms lost their sons. I remember when Will yes. uh, called me and told me, you know, that he couldn't come today because he was sick. Well, he couldn't come because he was high or... Right. Um, exactly. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, there, was, there was always yeah. something and you, you yeah. never really knew exactly where the truth would lie. You only heard what the addict yeah. told you. Yeah. And as I'm boys, shaking my head because yeah. I get it. While the two sons never met, Val's son William and Carol's son Evan were connected in so many ways. Both were born in 1983, only six days apart. Both were in accidents where they were prescribed opioids that both Val and Carol believe kickstarted their addiction. Both lost girlfriends from overdoses while sleeping high right next to them. And both lost their battle with addiction last year. We got a knock on the door at 2.30 in the morning um, with two detectives and telling us that I, I knew when my husband went to the door, mm -hmm. I, I knew. I just instinctively put on my robe, put on my bedroom slippers, and just walked to the door. And you know, you know it's every you know. It, you know it's every mother's worst fear. And there it was. Only a few months later, Carol got the knock on the door. They were there to uh, give the worst news ever that any parent will ever hear. And when they left our home. They had five more homes to go to that night. They left my yeah. home at yeah. midnight, going to five more homes with the same news of your child yeah. has overdosed. According to the Duval County Medical Examiner's Office, in 2019, 132 people who died as a result of an overdose had acetyl fentanyl in their systems at the time of their deaths. That's why less than a year after losing their children, these mothers say they needed to share their story. What made you say yes to doing this? Because we don't ever want to waste our pain. I go back to if it helps one person encourages one person or one family, then we've done our job. Now, there are resources out there for those fighting the addiction, but I do want to start by saying something I've learned in this process. Until the addict is ready to make a change, there is nothing a mother, or in my case, child, can say to make a person get sober. So right now on your screen is a toll-free number to contact an alcohol or drug abuse counselor. It's one 800 780 2294. They will work with anyone towards the first steps to getting help for free. Again, that number is 1 800 780 2294. Gateway Community Services in Jacksonville also offers free treatment. They were the ones that first introduced this new version of fentanyl to me. And tomorrow morning, Dr. Raymond Palm will be joining me in studio at 9 a.m. and we'll go more into the depth of resources for getting treatment. That's tomorrow on the morning show. Kent, enjoy. It wasn't until I told my father's story did I even realize there are resources for not only addicts, but for the family members who are suffering as well from this. So we also put a list of rehab and treatment centers on our website. People can find it and other resources right now inside this story on newsforjacks.com. Yeah, and Lauren, I, I know we appreciate it. Those of us who care about you appreciate <laughs> it and go through those emotions with you. But I want to point out, those of us who are journalists, we feel like, hey, our job is not to become the story. Why did you decide to share something so personal like this? So we were all taught that, right? Never become part of your story. So... While my father may have been the person to die from this disease, my family completely fell apart from it. Um, I did not speak to one side of my family because it became unhealthy for me. But since sharing my story and meeting Val and Carol and connecting with so many other people who reached out to me, 
I feel like I have a new family because of all this. I speak to Val and Carol almost every other day at this point. Addiction has such a stigma for being a shameful disease, but it doesn't have to be that way. So I've learned by joining groups, whether through social media or organized events, and you know, just talking about it and sharing this, we can all help each other move forward in fighting this. And these people did share with you. Just think of all those you've reached who haven't reached back, but still you've helped so many. Mm. Lauren, thank you. Thank you.